Uh, can you hear me? Can you see the, the sketchpad screen viewing? Can you hear me? Is my mic on? Okay, uh. can see the screen or not? Can you see the screen? The GSP Okay, start. Uh, I don't expect a lot of students, but uh, I just want to record and post it on the Google Classroom. Okay, All right. Now the question is like this: A bank offers two types of savings savings plans. For savings plan A, a deposit of one ten thousand and above will be given an interest of 4.5% for every year. So it means that uh, more than 10,000, you will get 4.5% of your principal. So as long as you have more than 10,000, then you will get interest 4.5% yearly. Now for the second plan, a deposit of 10,000 will be given an interest of 500 for every year. Okay. Now you, you read carefully this uh, savings plan B. A deposit of 10,000 will be given 500. So that means 10,000 you are given 500. If it's more than, more than uh, 10,000, let's say uh, 11,000 until 19,000, you are still given 500. Uh, when your sum is 10,000 and be, add another 10,000 becomes 20,000, then the interest will be another 500. So the interest will be uh, 1,000. If your principal is 30,000, then the interest will be 1,500. So this, this is slightly different. Right, they count in terms of ten thousand. How many ten thousand are there? Each ten thousand you are given five hundred. Now anything less than uh, ten thousand between uh, zero to ten thousand, then you are not given anything. Okay, so uh, this is the the story. Right. So if Isaac wants to make a savings of thirty thousand and withdraws it in the 8th year. Which savings plan is more beneficial? And give your reason, give the reason for your answer. Now, uh, okay. Now, when you, when you start putting in your money from Let's say this year I put in the money from the beginning of this year until the end of this year. Until the end of this year, I will be given the interest. Now, if, if it's somewhere between, right, 
I will not be given the interest. So interest will only be given for every completed year. Every completed year. Right? So let's say this year you put in, you will not be getting any interest. So the following year, you will get interest. Okay, yeah? right. Uh, you look at plan A. Now plan A, you put an initial sum of 30,000. So uh, at the beginning of the second year, right? throughout the first year, what you have is still 30,000. At the beginning of the second year, until the end of the second year, right before you are given the interest, you'll be getting your thirty thousand, and you have thirty thousand plus the interest based on thirty thousand, the four point five percent based on this thirty thousand. So during during the second year, you will be getting something like uh, one point zero four five of your principal. Of your principal okay now during the third year you will get the interest for the second and first and second year so that's why it's to the power of two now this is during the third year during during the third year because the third year has not completed yet so you will not get the interest for the third year so the the power here the index here is still two okay or not can can understand so far? Can or cannot? This this the sequence that I've listed out here. This is what you have throughout the first year. This is what you have throughout the second year. This is what you have throughout the third year. Now during the third year you will not be given the interest for the third year. You only be given the interest for the first and second year okay or not okay can can understand or not this part because a lot of students they, they are confused with this okay or not so far why is it that the third year you are getting only 1.045 to the power of 2 okay right now uh, during the eighth year the eighth year that means you are getting the interest for the first year, second year, third year, until the seventh year. Now, during the third year, since you have not complete, sorry, during the eighth year, since you have not completed the eighth year, so you will only be getting the interest for the first year until the seventh year. Now, eighth year, any time during the eighth year, when you want to withdraw the money, you are only getting the interest for the first seven years you are not getting the interest for the eighth year okay or not so far can understand or not why is it that it's like that ah huh? Liu Ying can uh, can understand why is it that uh, you, you you cannot be given the interest for that year right because that year has not been completed yet can uh? okay can then we move on to the plan B. Now for plan B, for plan B, uh, you are given 500 for every uh, 10,000. So if you are putting in 30,000, then you are getting 1,500, one lump sum, right? Now so same thing, for the first year, you are not getting the interest until you have completed one year. So during the second year, what you have is the 30,000 plus the 1,500. So during throughout the second year, any time when you want to withdraw your money, you are getting uh, 31,500. Okay? okay, so that means you are getting the interest for the first year. Second year, you have not completed, you won't be getting the interest. So finally, uh, we have the third year. During the third year, any day during the third year, you will get back your principal and the interest for the first year and second year. You won't be getting the interest for the third year yet because you have not completed the third year. So uh, this is how we go. And until the eighth year, now, the eighth year, any time during the eighth year, 
from the first day until the last day of the eighth year, you're only getting the interest for the first seven years. So you are getting this sum. Okay. So uh, this is this goes according to the arithmetic progression, whereas the first one uh, goes according to the uh, ge geometric progression. Right. So you have this these two. So now we are going to compare how much we are going to get at the end. Uh, sorry, during the eighth year, and how much when we follow plan A, and how much we are going to get if we follow plan B. So using our uh, geometric progression, Tn equals to A R to the power of n minus one. So you should be getting forty thousand eight hundred twenty-five ringgit for plan A. Now plan B follows the arithmetic progression okay so we have a plus n minus 1 d the d is 1500 because you have 30,000 okay right so you are getting this amount oh, this is any time during the eighth year so a plus n minus 1 d so it is 40,000 500 okay so 40,500 now luckily they ask you the eighth year if they ask you the ninth year then it will be different you know why because during the eighth year you have 40,500 so your interest for the eighth year will not be 1,500 it will be 2,000 so from during the eighth year during the ninth year, during the tenth year, and so on. For those years, you'll be for every complete years, right? Complete years. If you have completed the eighth year, then your interest will be two thousand. If you have completed the uh, ninth year, your interest will still be two thousand because now your principal has increased to more than forty thousand. So this is a bit tricky. Hmm? This one is a bit tricky. So luckily they ask you the eighth year. If they ask you the ninth year, or oh, you you cannot trick already. You cannot trick already. Huh? So uh, okay, still okay, huh? So uh, is this okay now? Uh, the what you get during the eighth year and what you get during the eighth year for plan B. So if you compare what you are what you get when you withdraw, the plan A give you. 40,800. The plan B gives you 40,500. So plan A is greater than plan B. Right? So plan A is more beneficial. Why? Because plan A collects more interest. Now if they ask you, this person going to withdraw the money during the ninth year or 10th year, uh, it's not necessary plan A anymore. It could be plan B, right? You go according to what they... Yes, Vikashini, why is the ninth year interest is 2000, not 1000? Now you see, uh, Vikashini, now during the eighth year, what you have in the bank is 40,500. It is no longer 30,000. It is no longer 30,000. So for the ninth year, when you get your interest for the eighth year, it will be 2,000. It's not 1,005 anymore. Okay or not? Uh, uh, Vikashini? Because I look at the, the sum here. The eighth year, what is inside the bank is 40,500. It is no longer 30,000 plus. It is already... Uh, 40,000 plus. So you should be getting another 500, another extra 500. So for the first until the the seventh year, every year you are getting 1,005. From the eighth year onwards, every year you will be getting 2,000. You will come a time uh, when you, your interest exceed, uh, let's say another, another eight year, your interest will exceed 50,000. So by that time, you will be getting uh, 2,500. Okay, now so you have to you have to look at the the different stages, different stages there. 
Okay, so if you say okay, then okay lah. Right, only two of you. Any further question or not? Any further question? The two of you. Any, any more question? No, then the other one. Uh, Liu Ying, any question for this, this one? Okay, don't understand the knife here. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now, uh, can you can you follow this sequence here or not, uh, Liu Ying? But of course, they didn't ask the nine year lah. If they ask nine year, then you have to worry. Eh? Okay, now you follow the sequence here. Now, during the second year, you have thirty one thousand five hundred, right? Then during the third year, you have. 33,000. Fourth year, you have uh, 34,500. Can you see the increase there? Uh, Liu Ying, can you see the increase? Every year increase by uh, 1,005? Yes. Now, the total you have inside the bank is always 30 plus throughout all these years from number one until number seven throughout all these years you have 30 plus so they will not give you the interest for 40,000 they will only give you the interest for based on 30,000 okay now okay then but if you look at the following year the eighth year you have 40,500 this is the first time you are having 40,000 inside the bank, more than 40,000 inside the bank. So the bank, according to the rules set by them, every 10,000, they will give you 500. So now you have exceeded the next 10,000. So for this year, the eighth year, they should give you 2,000 ringgit, but you cannot collect them until the ninth year. So during the ninth year, they will give you this amount 40,500 plus another 2,000 ringgit. Okay, can already. Okay, can. Yeah, can then we move on to the next one. Oh, uh, the next one is a radiant question. Uh, Vikashmi, your, your question will come after this. Huh? Because this girl asked me first, so your question will come after this. Okay, right. Now, if you look at the diagram here, you, you, if you look at the diagram here, now it is a semicircle and the semicircle is divided in a certain ratio. The circumference is divided by this point Q in the ratio 2 is to 3. The circumference of this semicircle is divided in the ratio 2, here 2, then this part 3, 2 is to 3. Whereas the diameter, the diameter AB, the diameter AC, sorry, my eye is terrible, AC, okay. The diameter AC is divided by the point P in the ratio 3 is to 1. Okay, in the ratio 3 is to 1. So, um, during the first part, we are not given the radius, we are not given how much exactly how much is the radius okay so we don't know how much is the radius okay so let the radius be r let's say if you don't know the radius and you need you need to use the radius and cancel it will cancel off finally one because this is ratio the radius will cancel finally so let the radius be r then this diameter ac is actually 2r okay not fine now, then we come to this AP. Okay, AP and PC. Now, all together from AP to PC is 3 is to 1. So, all together it is divided into 4 parts. 3 and 1. So, they are divided into 4 parts. Now, out of these 4 parts, how many belong to this AP? 3 parts belongs to AP. So, it is... 3 over 4 of the total 2R. Is that okay? 
you learn this in your vector also. Have you come across this type of ratio into fraction, fraction into ratio in your vector? Yes or no? No, no, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, so uh, it is four, three parts out of four parts of the diameter. Okay, three parts out of four parts of diameter. But diameter is 2R. So the AP, AP is 3 over 2R. Just cancel, cancel, you get 3 over 2R. Uh, now, I want to know how much is OP. OP. Now, we know that OA is the radius. So OA is R. So OP is this part, 3 over 2R minus the radius minus the radius here so you are left with op so op is half r okay fine then if op is half r then this pc must also be half r you just minus you take half minus the uh, sorry r minus the half r you will get pc is also half r now uh, we come back to the vertical line here the vertical line here o O, OB, sorry, OB is R, OB is R. Now, if you want to find the tangent, tangent is OB divided by OP. OB is R, OP is half R. So, R divided by half R, answer is 2. So, already proven, already proven. Okay or not? So we try to find the length, the, the, the straight line at the bottom there, uh, the diameter there. The length we divide into uh, many parts, AO, OP, PC, then AP. So each of these parts, we try to find them in terms of R, according to the given ratio. Okay, uh, right. Then uh, finally, you, 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 you go through the the working there, then you see that uh, OB is the, the radius, it is R. OP is actually half R. So tangent is R divided by half R, so it's 2. So far, okay or not? Uh, okay, then I proceed. In case anything wrong, you let me know, uh, uh, Liu Ying. Sometimes I make careless mistake. Okay, right, no problem, no mistake. Okay, so I proceed to the next part. I want to find the uh, angle, the angle AOQ. AOQ. So it's uh, this, this sector like that, right? the sector on this side. Or should I show you the other side? Like that? The sector there. Now, this sector is divided in the ratio 2 is to 3. Now, 2 is to 3, all together there are 5 parts. There are 5 parts. And this AQ takes up 2 parts. So, the angle AOQ is 2 over 5 of the whole angle here. The whole angle here is the straight line. So, it's 180 degrees. So, it is pi radian. The whole angle here is pi radian. And the angle here, the angle here is 2 parts of 5 parts, 2 over 5 of the pi. Right? Of course, the other side will be, this side will be 3 over 5, lah. this side 3 over 5. So, again, we found out the angle in terms of pi, lah, in terms of pi radian. Okay, right. Hmm. Uh, so far, this one I think okay. Now we continue with R. Now this R is a shaded region here. Okay, it is enclosed by three lines. Uh, the arc, which is a quarter of a circle, then the straight line BP and the straight line BC. So it's three lines. Uh, right. QOB. Now what is the question now? Length QB. QB. Now, in order to find the length QB, I have to find the angle 
QOB. QOB. Now QOB is actually 90 degrees. From A to B is 90 degrees. From A to Q it is 2 over 5 pi. Again, uh, from A to B, 90 degrees. 90 degrees is pi over 2. In terms of radian, is pi over 2. Then from A to Q, we have found the answer 2 over 5 radian. Okay. So the angle left here from Q to B. So I take the half pi minus 2 over 5. Then I will get pi over 10 radian. So that is the angle uh, subtended by the arc length QB. So, uh, right. So this is the angle. And making use of the formula S equals to R theta for R is 4. Now, for the second part, we are given the radius is 4. Earlier on, we are not given the, the radius. So it's 4. The angle is pi over 10. So finally, it is 2 over 5 pi centimeter. 2 over 5 pi centimeter. So until here, uh, okay or not? Okay or not? Hmm. Okay, okay. Liu Ying said okay. So we continue. Huh? We continue. So if it's okay, then we continue. Right. Now we proceed to find the the perimeter uh, perimeter of this. That is the second part uh, perimeter. So um, OB is the radius. Uh, OB is four. Is given the radius is four. Then OP is half r. So half r is actually two cm. Then using Pythagoras theorem, we can find BP. We can find BP. BP is square root of 4 square plus 2 square. 4 square plus 2 square. 16 plus 4 is 20. So this line BP, according to Pythagoras theorem, is square root of 20. Square root of 20. Okay, right. Then how about uh, the other length here? PC. PC earlier on we found out is half R. So half R is. 2 cm we got r is 4 so half r is 2 cm then finally we want to know the bc this here to here bc is s equals to r theta r is 4 theta is 90 degrees the b to c b to c the theta is 90 degrees that is pi over 2 so cancel cancel we have bc is half pi so I have listed out the three lines. If you want to find the perimeter, you add up these three lines, the length of these three lines. So add up 12.755. Use your calculator and add. Okay, so until here, uh, any mistake or not? Any very glaring mistake that I make? Sometimes old already. So, so far, okay or not? Ah, you show me one finger or you write down here okay uh, okay right so okay then I continue with the area now to find the area I find the area of this quarter of a circle here minus the area of this right angle triangle because they they drawn here 90 degrees so I know this right angle triangle right so area of uh, the sector half r square theta you substitute all the numbers inside half is half r is 4 theta is 90 degrees pi over 2 so finally you have 4 pi right this 4 pi is in centimeter square then we're going to find the area of this right angle triangle here half base times height base is 2 cm height is 4 cm so cancel cancel 4 cm Okay, so the shaded area, you take the whole area here, the sector, minus the area of right angle triangle. So answer is 8.566. Okay, now? Hmm. Okay, then 
uh, I go on to Vikashini's question. You please check, please check the working. Hey, did I record or not? Am I did I record? Alamak. If I didn't record this 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 person will be very angry already. It's recording, it's recording, right? It's recording. Okay. So uh okay, I'm rec I recorded it. Eh? So this one okay, then I move on to Vik Vikashini's question. Uh here. Where is Vikashini? Ah, this one, I think. Okay. Can you see Vikashini's question or not? It's uh, the same same screen. Vikashini, can see your question. You can see your question or not on the on the screen. Yes, ah. Uh, okay, right. So we continue with uh, Vikashini's question. Uh, Okay, right. So, uh, we catch this question. There are two equations. I think I crop off his <laughs> the first part of his question. Oh no, no, it's it's there, it's there. Okay. So I scroll up, uh, I scroll up, then you can see. Okay. Now there's a straight line y go to two x minus three, and this straight line is a tangent to the curve y goes to x cube. Blah 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 blah. Okay, now the, the the difference between this question and the one that we usually solve is this one, the curve. The curve is a cubic equation. Now, cubic equation, you know it is like that. You have a maximum point and also a minimum point, right? So, this, okay, right, now my, huh? now this is different from a parabola, the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation has only one turning point, whereas the cubic equation has two turning points. Now, uh, coming back to the question here, the straight line is a tangent to the curve. Now, if I want to find the point of intersection, if I want to find the point of intersection between the, the straight line and the curve, the cubic equation, right? find the point where they touch each other lah. find the point where they touch each other I can always solve these two equations these two equations here y equals to 2x minus 3 y equals to x cubed plus 3x squared blah blah so if I solve these two equations simultaneously I should get the point of intersection but cannot solve because it is a cubic equation when I equate equation 1 with equation 2, when I equate them, I will get a cubic equation. Cubic equation, you don't know how to solve. Right? So, I cannot use this approach. I cannot use the approach of solving simultaneous equation. So, what I'm going to do is, I try to use the dy dx. I try to use the tangent. I try to equate equate the tangent now from the first from the first equation what is the tangent from the first equation the tangent y go to mx plus c so the gradient is 2 the gradient is 2 ok now uh, Vikashini you know why I cannot solve some alternate equation why I need to use gradient or not Vikashini no Yes, okay. So, I cannot use uh, solving equation. I have to use dy dx. I have to use gradient. So, from equation 1, from equation 1, the gradient is 2. From equation 2, the gradient is dy dx. From equation 2, the gradient is dy dx. When I find the dy dx, dy dx is no longer a cubic equation. dy dx is a quadratic equation. So, when I try to equate the dy dx with the gradient equal to 2, right, dy dx equal to 2, I get a quadratic equation. Solving this quadratic equation, I will get two points. Oh, very good, because it's a quadratic equation, I can solve it 
and I can find the answer, two points. But because it is a cubic equation, then there are two possible lines. There are two possible lines. Can you see the red line and the purple line? There are two possible lines with the same gradient equals to 2. There are two possible lines. It means that there are two possible points where the dy dx is 2, where the gradient of tension is 2. One is this point, x equals to negative 3, and another is x equals to negative 1. So, which one of these points is this equation 2x minus 3? Which of this point? So, in order to know which of this point, I try to substitute this x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 1, not into equation 1, but into equation 2. Into equation 2. So I substitute x equals to negative 3 into equation 2, I get 23. Substitute x equals to 1 into equation 2, I get x equals to negative 1. So this will give rise to a pair of points, right? Uh, two pairs of coordinates, right? When I substitute x equals to 3, y equals to 23, I get one pair of coordinates. I substitute x equals to 1, y equals to negative 1, I get another pair of coordinates. Now, I want to know which pair, oh, sorry, which point or which pair of coordinates is actually that line, y equals to 2x minus 3. So coming back here, there are two tangents with gradient 2, but only one of them is y equal to 2x minus 3. So I take these two points, uh, sorry, these two numbers, this the first point here, and substitute into this equation y equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, substitute into y equal to 2x minus 3. And the left hand side, 23. Right hand side, negative 9. So this point does not satisfy the equation y equal to 2x minus 3. So it is not a point on that line. Okay. Now I proceed to use the second point, 1 negative 1. 1 negative 1, I substitute into equation 1. The left hand side is negative 1. Then I substitute again, I get the right hand side also negative 1. Now this shows that this point, 1 negative 1, satisfies the equation y equal to x minus 3. Therefore, this point must come from that particular tangent, that particular tangent. So the other point where the tangent is parallel to the tangent at P is negative 3, 23. So you see the first one. The one that we are referring to is the purple line. And the second tangent, which is not given one, is this red line here. So, we question it, okay or not? Any question? Okay, understand. Uh, did I make any mistake or not, Liu Ying? Got any careless mistake or not? Please check. Sometimes I add the numbers wrongly. Eh? Okay, no, ah, uh. no. Then I will end the lesson here. I go and uh, I go and save the thing. Uh. I can save the thing. Uh, I stopped sharing already. Huh? Goodbye, goodbye. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Wanakam. Nandri, Nandri. Okay, Nandri. Xie, xie. Okay. So, stop recording, right? Eh?